Anirudh Shravan sir, Senior IAS officer and secretary Kalyan Karnataka Regional Development Board, Kalburgi. I welcome you. I heartily welcome our Dean come Director, Dr. Kavita Patil Madam, who is an inspiration and driving force to organize today's function. I welcome, I welcome you, Madam. I welcome my friend and principal, Dr. Umesh SR, for today's function. I also welcome Dr. Shafiuddin, Medical Superintendent and a good colleague of mine for today's graduation day. I welcome all the HODs and teaching staff of Kuberga Institute of Medical Sciences for today's graduation day function. I welcome from bottom of my heart all the proud parents who have come here to witness the graduation day ceremony of their children. I welcome you. Finally, it is a pleasure to welcome all the young budding graduates, the Adhiratans, without whom this program wouldn't have been possible. Also, I would like to congratulate you all for your accomplishment. Last but not least, I would like to welcome all the electronic and print media persons and also those people who have worked behind the screen to organize this function. Thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, once said, there are, in effect, two things, to know and to believe one knows. To know is science, to believe one knows is ignorance. I request our chief guest, Padma Shri awarding Dr. B. N. Gangadhar sir, President, Medical Assessment and Rating Board, National Medical Council Director, to administer the Hippocratic Oath to the young budding doctors. I would like to request Dean and Director Dr. Kavita Patil Mam to administer the Hippocratic Oath. So I request uh, everybody to stand up and raise their uh, hand forward and read after me. The Hippocratic Oath will be taken. I solemnly pledge myself to you and my life to the service of humanity, even under the threat, I will not use my medical knowledge contrary to the laws of humanity. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life from the time of conception. I will not permit the consideration of religion, the nationality, race, party, politics, or social standing to intervene between my duty and patient. I'll practice my profession with conscience and dignity. And uh, the health of my patient will be my first consideration. I'll respect the secrets which are confided in me. I will give my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. I will maintain by all means in my power the honor, the noble traditions of medical professions. I will treat my colleagues with all respect and dignity. I shall abide by the code of medical ethics as enunciated in the Indian Medical Council. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'm deeply privileged to call upon Dr. Chandrasekhar Kapoor, sir, Professor and HOD, Department of Physiology, to introduce our Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. B. N. Gangadhar, sir, who is an idol of knowledge and experience, who is exemplary living, has motivated, inspired, and transform many hearts. Honorable Chief Guest Dr. B. N. Gangadhar, sir, distinguished uh, guest of honor, Shri Anirudh Shravan, sir, respected uh, 
डायरेक्टर ऑफ जिम्स डॉक्टर कविता पाटिल मैडम रेस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ जिम्स डॉक्टर उमेश सर डियर एच ओ डीज कोलिग्स एंड स्टार्स ऑफ टूडेज फंक्शन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट्स ऑफ टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन बैच सो ऑन दिस ग्रेट ओकेजन ऑफ थर्ड ग्रेजुएशन डेट जिम्स इट इज इंडीड माई प्राउड प्रिविलेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर बी एन गंगाधर सर एज चीफ गेस्ट फॉर टूडेज फंक्शन सो इम्पॉर्टिंग क्वालिटी मेडिकल एजुकेशन इन मेडिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन हैज बिकम ए चैलेंजिंग टास्क स्पेशली इन कंट्री लाइक इंडिया विच इज हैविंग हाइएस्ट नंबर ऑफ मेडिकल कॉलेजेस अक्रॉस लो सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम मेडिकल करिकुलम मैन पावर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर क्लिनिकल मटेरियल आर सम ऑफ द बेंच मार्क विच नीड्स टू बी असेस फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम टू अश्योर द मिनिमम स्टैंडर्ड्स ऑफ मेडिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन सो टूडे आई फील प्रिविलेज टू इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर बी एन गंगाधर सर who with his excellency and rich experience is holding the post of president national medical commission for medical assessment and rating board to keep a close vigilance and assuring the minimum standards in a medical college so health always starts in your mind true health is measured by the quality of our thoughts and peacefulness of our mind so being a renowned psychiatrist be kind to mind has always been success mantra of dr b n gangadhar sir so introducing dr b n gangadhar sir is always like showing torch to the sun born in 1955 at bangalore dr b n gangadhar sir obtained his mbbs degree from bangalore medical college in the year 1977 and completed md psychiatry from nimans in the year 1981 so he joined as faculty in 1981 at nimans and was promoted to the post of professor over years of service in 1992 and in 1987 he, he underwent specialized training in psychiatry at the vienna university us during his service at nimans till uh, 2014 he held many responsible posts like uh, chief of a uh, d addiction center head of department of psychiatry chairman of phd in clinical neurosciences medical superintendent program director of yoga center at nimans sir was appointed as dean at nimans for behavior sciences in uh, 2014 <laughs> and held the dean post for 3 years till 2016 and in january 2016 he was appointed for the post of director at nimans and served as director till 3rd october 2020 before nominated for mnc at national medical commission he is uh, nominated for the post of president and over last two and a half years he has been holding the post of president at nmc at various designation including the president for ethics and medical registration board and presently is the president of nmc for medical assessment and rating board so for his outstanding contribution in clinical services and research work dr b n gangadhar sir has been recognized with many awards at uh, central and state levels sir is a recipient of a most prestigious award of padma shri in medical sciences for the year 2020 other notable awards include dr c v raman award in medical sciences pimpe gowda award dr d s rajiv memorial oration award and for the list of awards he has received from indian psychiatric society the list goes endless Sir has to scheduled more than 450 papers published in scientific journals, with 30 articles published in newsletter and bulletin. He has written three books with more than 24 chapters. So he has got publication score of 55 in H index, and he has, uh, to his credit, more than 10,000 citation in scientific journals. Sir's keen area of research and interest includes mental health, yoga, and neuroscience. Dr. B. N. Gangadhar Sir was instrumental in developing strategies to treat severe psychiatric disorders, including management of depression and schizophrenia, using non-invasive brain manipulative procedure, including electroconvulsive therapies and repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. And his uh, interest in yoga, he has pioneered in integrating yoga as a therapy for treating mental and neurological dis disorders. So he has established an integrated yoga therapy and research center at Nimans NICY, through which yoga therapy is being offered 
for various patients with uh, psychiatric disorders, addiction, and neurological disorders. So Dr. Gandhadar sir has been a recipient of many national and international fellowships and uh, the member of various professional bodies. And he also holds the chair of National Distinguished Scientist in Department of Ayush from April 2023. Sir, your valuable advice and your presence today will definitely mold the young budding doctors on this occasion in their future endeavor. And your footprint today at Jinx will open the door for many aspiring doc doctors to follow your path of success. So I'm uh, really thankful to Director of Jinx, Dr. Kavita Patil Madam, for uh, inviting Dr. B. N. Gangadhar sir to Jinx. So on, uh, on behalf of uh, Jinx staff and students, I welcome you, sir, for this uh, August gathering. And uh, we are uh, very thankful for making your presence in spite of busy schedule to grace this occasion. So thank you one and all. In recognition of the tireless contributions to the field of medicine, I request Dr. Chandrasekhar, sir, and our director, ma'am, to uh, felicitate our chief guest. I humbly request Dr. B. N. Gangadhar sir to enlighten the graduates with his words of wisdom. Distinguished uh, colleagues on the dais, the guest of honor, the director, the medical superintendent, the principal, my dear students, now they are no more students though, until they get their graduation certificate at the end, they are still deemed students. I know they have successfully cleared the final examination and almost nearly completing the compulsory rotating internship. So they would soon be my colleagues, but nonetheless on this function, they are to be called as students. Wish you all the best. And all the proud uh, parents, 
guardians, kin, relatives of these young doctors. They all must be feeling proud that they have reached this level in the society, in their career, in their education, which I'm sure is making all of you very proud. I congratulate each one of you here for having contributed to their success. Of course, I can't miss all the teachers who have strived in the last five years. A person who passed a plus two examination, perhaps many had never had an opportunity to see a dead body also. You started from there, holding their hands, walked them through this important uh, career which they have been successful. I'm sure you deserve all the accolades, not just for this function, but for also their success. I wish you again my heartfelt thanks for adding another army of doctors to the medical profession. Thank you very much. I don't claim to be a great orator using English. I always feel comfortable speaking Canada. That's my mother. But whenever I have gone to these graduation functions, I am reminded that, look, there is an All India quota. Some 20 students might have been studying here. They may not know the local language. Please use English. I also have argued that many parents would have come here, may be more comfortable in listening to the speaker using Canada. Whatever may be the case, I will try to be as simple as possible, continue my conversation, continue my speech using this foreign language. In fact, the um, Masters of Ceremony, the very first word they said, Janani Janma Bhuvamishya Swargadapi Gariyasi. If I have to love my motherland, I must also love my mother tongue. But for some reason or other, whatever may be the reason, the oath was that given to you English language, let this convocation speech also be in English language. I'm sure all of you have felt very thrilled about this event for which event itself may be a fortnight or a one month planning for you. But to be able to plan this, you have planned for more than six or seven years. From the day you got into your first two, I'm sure you have made a choice then, whether your parents told you or you yourself wanted to be, you had a dream to become doctors. And that, what we may call as tapas, has yielded the boon, the success, of having made you into full doctors as a part of this function. This function is only nominal, but there has been efforts which has gone on. Maybe as many as about 25 exams you have taken. When I'm saying 25 exams, you wrote 25 papers and perhaps even more practicals for that. And you ensured that you succeeded in every step that reminds me of the sage Bhagiratha, who brought the Ganga to this land. He had to make so many efforts, finally he succeeded. And same is the case with medical education. You have now partly succeeded 
in the sense that you will all be aspiring for becoming specialists. And there is another test which you are going to go through. Another examination you are going to go through. And some of you may not even stop there. Super specialists. You want to take another exam, another entrance, and some don't stop there also. You want to have a postdoctoral fellowship in some select area. So what all you learned here, you will probably sharpen it, sharpen it, sharpen it to be able to achieve a super success in one area. And I'm sure some of you will actually make it, if not all though. But nonetheless, I wish you all the best for your entire career from the day now to whatever you want to achieve as a medical professional. At the same time, I want to place a caution. I want to place an important caution, which all of us have been told during our so-called exit function. This is a, uh, what you may call as the graduation day for you. In those days, we used to have a send-off for us. A convocation used to be by the university. So a send-off party in the Paul or whoever was the chief guest would also advise us, be proud, be proud that you have become a doctor. Be proud that very few people of your so-called plus two or a pre-university batch were able to achieve this. In fact, very few even became literate up to the level of plus two. So you are already in the, what we call as the top layer in the society by being medical doctors. Don't compare yourself to the medical doctors of your fraternity. And I'm still not the top, but you are top in the society. Have this self-esteem. Please have this self-esteem all through your life. Whatever you may achieve, specialist, medicine, surgery, super specialist, etc., etc., are added qualifications. Please remember the Medical Council of India then and the National Medical Commission now registers you to be doctors, gives you a license to practice the moment you pass this examination. So which means you are already successful and eligible, recognized doctors which you should actually be feeling very proud and often I see fresh graduates feeling that no, this course is ended, but I am still not a specialist. I am still not a super specialist and so on and so forth. I don't want you to go with this mindset. Please be proud, have high self-esteem that you have been successful at the MBBS level, which is what is going to give you the recognition. So having said that, uh, maybe a few other points I will remark. I know you are not sitting here to be uh, wanting to listen to a boring lecture. They're all waiting for the degrees to be given, the ranks to be given, the medals to be given for the best performance in the XYZ subjects. They're all waiting for that. And that is more important to you, of course. I believe that it is more emotional to all the family members to witness their kin receiving this very, very august uh, certificate from uh, the principals or the directors or so on and so forth. So I believe I have to cut short what I intend to uh, share with you. A few things I thought I point out just for uh, you have all chosen a profession, a profession to serve. <coughs> so in Kannada we call it as vritti. Vritti is a profession, profession to serve. But I want the motto of wanting to serve, to become your pravritti, your nature. So if this transformation occurs in your life, the obtaining of an MBBS certificate in this very important Gulbaga Institute of Medical Sciences will be successful. <coughs> so please yearn for not just the but a development of a nature from vritti, I want you to develop that pravritti to serve. Why do I do it? Why do I need it? 
why should you why should i change why should i want to become by nature person who is service minded they say often we are pose this question that i have become qualified i have to earn my livelihood i have to do my job within the ethical framework as has been prescribed and that is good enough <coughs> that is good enough that is the nature that is the prakriti you have to be good professional good professional within the ethics that has been put for you and you should earn your livelihood and that is what is going to happen and that most of you will do it i'm sure you all of you will do it and that is a nature that's what you're going to do it but you have to grow above nature all of us want to grow above nature and only humans can achieve that you have to become that person who is doing this with mindfulness with the mindset that i should serve for others and that pravruti if you develop and that is what is called as the samskruti you change yourself into from your prakruti you should graduate yourself to that samskruti and of course you could also become a little higher than that more spiritualistic in that when i am doing this i am not expecting any rewards without rewards i am going to be doing it and that people call it as susamskruti but unfortunately some of us instead of going to this direction we may go into the other direction and that would be called as vikruti so what i am requesting all of you is that your education has ended you have got a graduation degree but you have an opportunity to graduate yourself into a higher spiritualistic pedestal in offering service to those needy in the society kindly do this that is going to make you actually better persons in the society society has already given you a very high pedestal and you could grow beyond that <coughs> the second part which i thought i have emphasized in many meetings <coughs> this is for you when in profession we all become specialized we all go into different different areas there can be unfortunately inadvertently not that you wanted to do that you start discriminating between the specialists between the people with whom you are working i don't want that to happen please respect every professional in your community keep them all equal respect and regard and even better even better please regard all professionals of other systems also in fact had not been the traditional systems of medicine given the foundation we wouldn't have gone on to develop the modern systems of medicine so keep your modern systems of medicines inquiry spirit into all other professionals which they are doing and be respectful to all professionals which is what is going to make you a better doctor in the days to come rather than having to discriminate people or criticize people of other traditional systems as well in fact the government has already been talking about various ways in which how to amalgamate systems and bring them together i don't know when it is going to happen but nonetheless our spirit should be always critical inquiry based looking for evidence whichever system that we are practicing we are all practicing the modern medicine system continuously be a learner continuously be a person who is going to refine the system what you are already practicing lastly probably i will stop here that whenever we are talking of health we are all taught here how to cure a disease how to treat an illness and of course the pediatric department would also talk about how to be what we may call as 
uh, operators in promoting health, preventing health as well. We all learned that. But what is important is whether there is a comprehensive change in the health of a given individual. Definition of health, WHO talks about not just have, not having a disease, but feeling well physically, mentally and socially, which is what is talked about, whether this change has occurred as defined by the WHO. But please remember, even before WHO said this, almost 2,000 years earlier, the Ayurveda had defined health an even more sophisticated way. In addition to, of course, physical health, it also talked about mental health, which WHO added much later after their initial definition of health. And more importantly, the Ayurveda said there is also a spiritual health you should focus on. Prasanna Atmendriya Manaha Swasthya Itiya Bidiyate. That's what they say. That in addition to physical health, you should also look for the mental health and also the spiritual health. Perhaps those would also be researched on, in fact, WHO had already started a research on how to inculcate the spiritual health component in its definition, but maybe in the due course, something else will emerge in WHO as well. And of course, while practicing this, telling this to our patients, our systems of other practitioners, remember the health department of the government has also moved from illness to wellness. The centers now are called as wellness centers, which are peripherally located. In addition to treating, but I think they are going to be focusing on promoting health in various areas of life. So this holistic medicine is something that you need to achieve, whichever specialty that you may take. Some of you can become cardiologists, some of you can become neurologists, some of you can become psychiatrists, some of you can become uh, radiologists, whatever may be the case, but the point is, is this the person who got better, he feels better, rather than a disease got cured or a laboratory parameter got corrected? I think we should go beyond that part of it. And lastly, as regards you yourself are concerned, kindly keep fit. It's very important. Doctors should walk the talk. All of us not necessarily tell patients to keep fit, exercise, be slim, avoid junk food, avoid X, Y, Z, etc., etc. But am I also practicing? If I am practicing, whatever I say to the patient is going to have more strength. And the patients will look at the qualities of a doctor because the doctor is in a high pedestal. In fact, the Bhagavad Gita says, Yadhyada charati shreshtaha, whoever in the society who are highly placed, whatever they are doing, the rest of the people will follow. So kindly follow those principles of health which you are going to be preaching to your patients and keep yourself fit, exercise, relax, be in healthy habits and of course continue to do and learn and be very, very equipped in terms of your profession. If you're going to do that, your good health is going to make a, last, uh, a lasting impact on your patients. And lastly, be grateful to what has happened to you today, becoming doctors. You have learnt from many people. Many people have handheld you. Uh, when I uh, entered medical profession or medical, as a medical student, the principal then had given us a talk, particularly when we moved from preclinical subjects and then we were passing the first year we were all going into the second year clinical subjects. We had a, uh, uh, what called as a talk and address by the principal who was supposed to motivate us in becoming doctors. And what he said is something last 50 years away, he had spoken this and I still remember. I still remember very green in my mind. He said, look, all these days, teachers, we taught you in the lecture classes, maybe in the dissection hall, maybe in front of those uh, microscopes in the physiology laboratory or anatomy histology laboratory or uh, cutting the frog and putting that graph, etc., etc. We taught you. We were there.
But when you go to the clinical departments, your first teacher is not me, not my teacher, not my colleague. Your first teacher will be your patient. Listening to that patient is going to make you more uh, evolved in terms of learning medicine. And not the patient alone, your second teacher is the relative of that patient. And the third teacher to me could be that nurse who has been with the patient for the longest period in the hospital. She would know her patient better, the illness better, the behavior better, the symptoms better, the signs better. So she is going to be teaching you. So be grateful to these people who actually molded you into becoming those doctors. In addition to just picking up the mitral stenosis murmur, picking up that percussion sound on the mnemonic uh, lung, you also learn how to talk to the patient, how to talk to the relatives, how to explain the disease. You learn all these things. And that was taught by your own patients. So please be grateful to them. And I'm sure there are many other people who have helped you, your interns, your PGs, your own seniors for that matter, and of course a host of faculty and the other people who have been there with you all through. And of course, in many other places, you would have met other teachers during the examination or if you have gone to some conferences by chance, you would have met other students. You have heard from informal lectures in your college. There were many places where you got the opportunity to learn. Please be grateful to every of these components of learning that was made possible by each and every individual. And I'm sure if that gratefulness is expressed, you have actually become totally successful in getting this degree in this college. And once again, I wish each one of you the very best and be successful in your life. I congratulate all the parents who are sitting here. And most importantly, I congratulate uh, Dr. Kavita Madam having brought out successful third batch of graduates into the army of medical profession. Thank you very much. Sir, your words on power of education, importance of value in life, and to maintain peace and prosperity in the society were truly totally inspiring. From Vritti to Pravritti, Samskriti to Susamskriti, what I remember from all this, I can just uh, conclude it in uh, two sentences. One from a uh, slok stanza from Bhagavad Gita, which says, Karmanya Madhikara se maafaleshu kadachana. That means, whatever we do, we should surrender everything to God, leave the fruits to fruits, whatever the results are there to God, we only should act and leave the rest to the God. And the second thing which I could conclude was, help ever, hurt never, love all, serve all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I feel honored to have with us Sri Anirudh Shravanti, IAS, a man of distinct vision and foundation head of illuminating ideas. I would like to call upon Dr. Mohammad Shafiuddin, sir, medical superintendent, to kindly introduce our guest of honor. Today, we have gathered here because of the eminent figure sitting on the right side. I think you people should enjoy today. I am not hearing the applause very loudly. Once more, it should be like that because your parents are, see, most of the time I am observing you there. Neck is towards this side only. So, okay, rest. So, after listening the enlightened speech by a delighted and enlightened chief guest today, then it is my duty to introduce another guest of honor, Anirudh Sravandi, IAS. His education from 2000. Three to seven, he finished his B graduation from Bits Parani, Rajasthan. I think with this, I need not have much uh, to read. All you people have got that. He got his training of IAS, 2011 batch, till 15 in UPSC, that is uh, 
Lal Bahadur Shastri Dishman Training Center in New Delhi. And he stood his UPS rank is 13th rank in India. I think it's uh, my privilege or accidentally, I don't know. When his first posting was there, my first posting in Ballari also, he was commissioner, assistant commissioner of Ballari as a probationary. I was there as an assistant officer in Wims Ballari. And uh, the first HKDP that time, certification issued to me is by him. I remember him. So he was assistant commissioner and subdivisional magistrate in Ballari 2013 to 14. During that time, we also read in the paper, he was actively involved in election controlling officer. There, he raided and made unaccounted cash. I don't want to mention that, but for that, he got appreciation from the election commission of India. Then he came, when I came also Ballari to Gulbarga, he came also to Ballari to Gulbarga during, I came in 2014, he came to Gulbarga 2015 to 2017, he served as a CEO of Jilla Panchayat. See, as that they say that Beliyoshri, Molakelli, Gutta Guttan, that another layer there. So the institute where he studied, it shows. That's the reason we say basic education must be good, because of such people they never keep quiet. Whenever they work, they want to be sincere and in the topmost to get the work done. So like that, when he was CEO in Gulbarga, in Manrega, he achieved one milestone that giving 40,000 persons work. And what he did, he did the work of conserving water, the ponds which are dried, 1,500 ponds. So for that, actually that time in 15, it was a, like a drought like system in, uh, yeah, season was in Gulwar. So for that, he got appreciation from the people that is public hero in Kannada, public TV. I think this is the one clip I am showing you this. That was in 2017. Then after that he changed, he left Gulare, he went to Tumkur as a managing director and CEO. There also in the, that time, whenever I think Work has followed him or he followed the work, I don't know. When he went to Tumkur, Tumkur was that time decided as a, what you call Tumkur Small City Limited from Government of India and that work was endorsed to him and he has completed it successfully that time. After that, in 1718, he became Mission Director, State Rural Livelihood Mission, that is from Government of India. There also, what he did, there also one innovation, he made Sanjeevine Sarasa. This, he helped the, the women who were in the rural setup, working their home to market them how to get into the business or get the profit. That is called Sanjeevine Sarasa, where he helped 200 women to get new market to their product. Then, he became Deputy Commissioner and District Magistrate Chikbalapur, 2018 to 2019. There also, he did not keep quiet. He removed encroachment of nearly 200 water bodies. That is, almost worth of 2,000 acres of land irrigation that he brought into conservation. Yes. This is appreciated by Government of India and it was invited by the cabinet to present his work there, how to work in that way and it was appreciated there. 
Then he became commissioner for collegiate education. That is government of Karma 2019 to 2020. There also he made Vijayi Baha and Jana Nidhi two online learning channels. See, this is one of the clips for that. For that, actually, for his lack of dialect for this, God always sent somebody to work. Wherever there is a problem also, he, along with the problem, he set a solution. We, we human beings, has to catch it. So in that way, in 2019, what he did, online coaching for the government students, poor students. For that, he made this Vijayi Bhava and Jananidhi app, our online teaching course. For that, he got 10 million of viewers for that. And that was help him in pandemic. And at the same time, he made that mighty helpline also to provide so called uh, socio, social, uh, um, psychosocial support for undergraduate students to poor to uh, prepare for their CD and need. Then he became Commissioner Rural Development, Government of Karnataka in 2019 to 2021. Again, he started their new campaign under, under Manrega for soil moisture conservation, increasing women's participation, building the stoke pits, and they were all successfully executed. In view of that pandemic, in Manrega, he achieved highest number of individuals, that is 6.39 million were employed for state of Karnataka. That was family plan, uh, financial year of 21-22. It was acknowledged by the economic department of our finance ministry, government of India. Then he went to CSL officer, deputy commissioner, district magistrate, Vijayanagar district. That is a new one district. Again, new challenge, new administration. For that, in February 21 to 22, he carved the new district and planned creating new departments. And he was the first this there for new uh, district. There he established 20 departments newly. At the same time, he made 250 of the bed of new MCH block, that is district block plus MCH block there. And uh, during COVID, he increased among the alukas for COVID only 250 bit extra. Then he made there as a spurti one work there. In the spurti, what you do, he used to have workshops and training to nearly 5,000 youngsters every week for six months. So for that, he provided super 100 provide to entry into NEET and what you call CET preparation also. This was for uh, government students. And in uh, Vijayanagar when he was there, there was surplus of BMS and CSR fund where and do, with that he made a new college and to people to get the basic elementaries out of it. And the lighting of Hampi, you might have seen in the media, so that is called Hampi by Night. He is the one who started that Hampi by Night and made it as a World Heritage Area. Apart from this, his academic as an administrative uh, uh, this one, uh, work, academically also, his contribution, he has written a, a book in the book of Pearls of Sweet. He has written an article that Pragna Legal Aid Cell, it is collected in Manek, uh, Manrega Implementation Kalburi District, that is in 2016. He is awarded Homi J. Bhava Running Trophy Asai because of his speech, that is Science and Technology and Environment in 2011, which was delivered in Lal Baju Shastri National Academy in New Delhi. <coughs> and with this brief introduction, I again, one, once again, I welcome Anirudhji to this, our graduation day. And 
again students loud voice yes today you should have this skill your function this is your work day work thank you one thank you sir in the honor of his tremendous work to the society i request dr mama shafiuddin sir and director ma'am to felicitate our public hero to be guided by the public hero himself please guide us sir a very good evening to everyone uh, firstly honorable uh, uh, chief guest uh, the director of uh, gyms medical superintendent the principal all dignitaries hods uh, before on in front of the dais all the uh, assistant professors all the faculty all the staff parents and most importantly uh, i think the uh, reason why we are all gathered here today the adhirathans of uh, uh, gyms uh, congratulations for uh, uh, your great effort i think one of the most uh, tough and most uh rigorous training uh is uh, the course of rbs and all of you have passed with flying colors i think it's a moment of great pride not only for you for your parents for where you come from from your villages from your towns from your cities i i congratulate you from the bottom of my heart and uh, it's a great moment for me also to witness the energy witness the joy and the festive nature that is here today in gyms uh, i am uh, thankful for uh, the invitation uh, to come here and share a few thoughts uh, with all of you of course after uh, the words spoken by dr gangadhar sir there is very little that i can add very little that i can uh, match up to uh, the words of wisdom that have come from him i think uh, most of you have been i was observing that you were keen enough in listening to what Uh, sir was saying i have also learned from it i have also understood that it carries deep meaning and he has explained he promised i think they were conveyed in very simple words you can be sure that if you follow these uh, words of advice you will have a wonderful uh, future i'll only uh, i'll not take much time most of you are waiting for uh, taking your degrees your medals clicking pictures and thankfully today it's not raining uh, one wouldn't expect that in the last week of april it will be one would be worried of uh, rain but the past two days have been really uh, uh, different in terms of weather but again i'll just come back to what i feel i would have liked to know when i was in your position when i was graduating i would like to tell myself and i'd like to tell you i'd like to tell anybody in your position number one in life please stay positive please understand that all problems have solutions that one can always look at mistakes and correct them there is un 
anybody, any person uh, would not be in a position to say that he or she has done the right thing, has never been wrong, has always been on the right side of everything. But a person who doesn't realize that there is a way to correct himself will always be on the wrong. So one thing I'd like to tell you, please stay positive, please have a spirit of trying to improve every day and this will take you in a, a long, long way. Point number two, most of you, I think, will face stress in your lives. You will have long working hours. You will be taxed. You might not be even trusted by your patients, thanks to Google. Every time there is an ailment, even I do that. <laughs> I should apologize to all doctors, but this is, this is the nature of things now. This is the nature of the world we live in. You might have, uh, you know, put long hours, you've seen hundreds of people who complain of the same thing, you've looked at the reports, you might diagnose a certain thing, but again, there'll be somebody who'll ask you a question, but, but Google says something else. These are things that you'll have to deal with, perhaps. You'll have to develop the aptitude to deal with all these things. Immense resources of patience, of resilience. I think all these things internally you have to build, of course, Academically, the kind of books we read, the volumes, I think no other course has such uh, taxing, uh, you know, uh, uh, syllabus. But I think what you guys will also face is to uh, tackle the, from the other side, perhaps one may call it ignorance, anxiety from the, on the part of the patient, uh, and still uh, go ahead and try to do your best. I think the Hippocratic Oath tries to emphasize all these things and uh, it was wonderful uh, hearing to it. It was the first time that I have heard it in a medical college. I have read it, I have uh, heard of it, but it's wonderful to see all of you doing that. The last and final thing I'd like to say, uh, which has helped me also in uh, uh, my work, uh, is please, apart from the professional life that you have, please also have a personal life which is rich and which is if you have a hobby, you have to nurture it. If you don't have one, please develop a hobby. Please do things in life. There's much more than accolades which are related to finances or money or I have developed my net worth is this much or that much or I have opened X, Y, Z or I have done this or that. At the end of the day, you need to have a good life, a well-rounded uh, uh, home to go to. Please focus on that. Uh, um, I think uh, the medical superintendent, because I gave him the 371J certificate, has praised me no end. Uh, so hereafter, whenever I have to, <laughs> I'm in a position to give certificates, I'll be much more careful. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Best wishes all of you. Your words on positive thinking and positive attitude has really moved us, sir. To summarize his life, I would like to quote verse of Paswarna, spiritual revolutionary, who said, Kai kave kailasa, dayave dharmada mola. Thank you, sir. Being addressed as doctor is a dream come true to every MBBS aspirant. And to bestow this officially, we request Dr. R.P. and Dr. Pravin to call out the graduates. Your life is your story and the adventure ahead of you is journey to fulfill your own purpose and potential. So a very warm and uh, pleasant good evening to one and all. It's an immense pleasure to have all the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais, teachers, students and their parents on the graduation day. Ananta Vijaya of 2017 batch, the Adiratan. I, Dr. Aarti, second year postgraduate from Department of Ophthalmology. Myself, Dr. Praveen, second year postgraduate, Department of General Medicine. We firstly congratulate all our birding doctors on your graduation. We request all the graduating doctors to receive their degree certificate and kindly maintain the order. Now, we would like to request our honorable chief guest, Dr. B. N. Gangadhar, to hand over the certificates to the doctors. 
Firstly, Dr. Sanjay B. Rathod, son of Mr. Vithal Rathod and son, uh, Mrs. Mahadevi Rathod. Burma, daughter of Mr. Subhashyanda Burma and Mrs. Akkanagamma. Son of Mr. Chenna Reddy and Mrs. Devakamma Reddy. Abdul Salim Fais, son of Mr. Abdul Salim and Mrs. Rubina Begum. Abdullah Faizan Kudu, son of Mr. Mazid Adan and Mrs. Rubina Farman. Aditya Biradar, son of Mr. Ashok Biradar and Mrs. Chitraleka. Dr. Afra Zainab, daughter of Mr. Muhammad Abdul Ali and Mrs. Aisha Nasri. Anil Kumar Mangalji and Mrs. Suvarna Mangalji. Dr. 
Ashur Ahmed, son of Mr. Arvez Ahmed and Mrs. Samim Begum. Son of Mr. Baburam Miskin. Son of Baburam Miskin and Mrs. Shashikala Miskin. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request our guest of honor, Sri Anirudh Shavan, sir, to uh, hand over the degrees to the students. Dr. C. D. Naya, daughter of Helen Gowda C. D. and Mrs. Suma C. D. Chennabaswa Tadakal, son of Mr. Gangadhar Tadakal and Mrs. Kalpanak Tadakal. Dr. Kiranjeevi DM, son of Mrs. Mrithunjaya DK and Mrs. Manjula NM. Dr. Devika, doc, daughter of Mr. Renuka Charya S and Mrs. Pushpa S. Son of Mr. Basara Channel and Mrs. Shova. Dr. Guru Lingappa Lasangi, son of Mr. Ramesh Halsangi and Mrs. Shubha Lasangi. Dr. Anman, son of Mr. Virata and Mrs. Sharada Bai. Son of Mr. Anil Pandey and Dr. Seema Pandey. Dr. Juzaina K. Daughter of Mr. Muhammad Ali and Mrs. Ajita.
Dr. Jyoti, daughter of Mr. Venkatesh and Mrs. Jayashree. Dr. Karthi Kalaskar, son of Mr. Anil, Anil Kalaskar and Mrs. Bharti Kalaskar. Dr. Kavya, daughter of Mr. Basvaraj Jainapure and Mrs. Geeta Jainapure. Dr. Kirti Nair, daughter of Mr. P. A. Sabu and Mrs. Vijin Mini. Dr. Kiran Kumar, son of Mr. Venkatesh Angdi and Mrs. Padmavati, Padmavati Angdi. Dr. Kirish Kishor Kumar, son of Mr. Himata Rao and Mrs. Bhavna Devi. Son of Mahadev Sangha and Mrs. Gangama. Dr. Madhi Rajoriya, daughter of Dr. D.S. Rajoriya and Mrs. Arju Rajoriya. Dr. Manju Abudihal, son of Mr. Reva Chitappa and Mrs. Gurudevi. Dr. Manoj Agarwal, son of Keshav Chand and Mrs. Radha Agarwal. Dr. Mariam Tashi, daughter of Mrs. Sirajuddin and Mrs. Tasnim Begum. Thank you, sir. Now, we would request our uh, beloved Dean and Director, Dr. Gita Patil Ma'am, to hand over the certificates. Dr. Muhammad Akbar Qureshi, son of Muhammad Nizamuddin Qureshi and Mrs. Irfana Begum. Kusmalata Reddy. Dr. Muhammad Farhan Danish, son of Mr. Muhammad Abdul Roh and Mrs. Samina Farzana. Dr. Muhammad Jawad Mateen, son of Mr. Muhammad Kajibuddin Patel and Mrs. Tabassum Patel. Dr. Monu Kumari Sharma, daughter of Ms. Anuman Prasad Sharma and Mrs. Girijas Kivi. Dr. Maunesh, son of Mr. Baswaraj and Mrs. Kantamma. Dr. Muska Khanam, daughter of Mr. Izaz Khan and Mrs. Farhina Khanam. Dr. Nagamini, daughter of Mr. Vishnu Kumar Zinde and Mrs. Shobha Zinde. Dr. Nami 
Shira Fatima, daughter of Mr. Normal Sujat Hussain and Mrs. Anjum Jahan. Dr. Narendra, son of Ramesh Narayan Rao Thamitkar and Mrs. Rekha Thamitkar. Dr. Neela Bhani, daughter of Mr. Naganda Hill Hedde and Mrs. Jayakshmi Hedde. Daughter of Mr. Rakesh Kumar Yadav and Mrs. Pavitra Yadav. Son of Mr. Madhusudan Ganade and Mrs. Shobha Ganade. Dr. Ravi Rotham, 
son of Mr. Brij Mohan Sharma and Mrs. Premlata Sharma. Reddy 
and Mr. Sailaja. Once again, congratulate all the graduates and all the graduates are please 
requested to be seated at your place. All the graduates, please, please be seated at your place. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen. As a token of appreciation for all the efforts that they have put in, we would like to call upon the tops of the batch in respective subjects. Also, we request our Dean and Director, Dr. Pavita Patil Ma'am, to give away the prizes. Dr. Anuja Mali, subject topper of Anatomy, Physiology, Biochemistry and ENT. Oh. A cash prize of rupees 10,000 in the name of late Sri Raghavendra Melkundi has been awarded to the topper of ENT by Dr. Renuka S. Melkundi, Professor and HOD, Department of ENT. Pharmacology, General Surgery and Pediatrics.
फेस थ्री पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू डॉक्टर सानिया ನೆನಪುಗಳನ್ನುಭವಗಳನ್ನುಷ್ಟ all the dignitaries on the dais my professors parents and my fellow graduates it is an honor for me to speak on behalf of my batch and i'll try my best to say everything so it comes to this mbbs has always been a dream a dream before even it had begun and today it is a dream that has been fulfilled and here we all are standing for that and uh, we are these five and a half years we have been transformed personally and professionally and without a doubt our college gulbarga institute of medical sciences has been instrumental in the process i'd like to thank all the department professors teachers staff and patients for guiding us throughout this journey to become good doctors coming to first year it was new college new friends new experience we were young and enthusiastic got the best foundation from our professors second year the honeymoon period yeah the friend circles expanded the long gap between the internals the batch trips and diphtheria perfect roller coaster year third year third year was the year of fest for us but who followed it was covid 19 it was about all about online classes teleconsultation online exams and learning new things which we didn't even imagine at home final year as usual half of it went in covid 19 and the other half was full of stress studies and exams and we made it to the internship we are lucky enough to get trained in gyms with enough of patience inspiring professors supportive pgs and senior residents and my friendly co-interns everything passed everything passed so fast it feels like yesterday i always had a dream since my first year to walk across this very stage and receive all the class and cheers and it all went by so fast and now it is so surreal it was the best of the times it was the worst of the times it was the age of wisdom it was the age of foolishness it was the season of light it was the season of dark it was the spring of hope and it was the winter of despair despair we had everything before us last but not the least i'd like to extend my gratitude to my seniors my friends and my lovely juniors who are no less than a family to me Finally heartfelt thank you to all the proud parents here today thank you for believing in us and allowing us to live this dream last day you guys the batch of 2017 i have a few lines for you koneya bari seriveyu navella ee surina adiyali hottu bhavanegala mahapura aidu varshagala sukha dukha alu nagu asahayakate vantitana ellavannu mee nintirveyu iga ಕಾಲೇಜಿನ ದಿನಗಳಿವು ಕಾಣಬಲ ಸ್ವರ್ಗಗಳು ಹಿಂತಿರುಗಿ ನೋಡಿದರೆ ವಿಷಾದದ ಕುರುಹುಗಳಿಲ್ಲ ಹೋಗುತ್ತಿರುವೆವು ಸವಿ ನೆನಪುಗಳ ಸಾಗರವ ಹೊತ್ತು ಹೋಗುತ್ತಿರುವೆವು ಸವಿ ನೆನಪುಗಳ ಸಾಗರವ ಹೊತ್ತು ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಯೋಚಿಸೋಣ ಪರಿವಿಡಿಯಿಂದ ಶುರು ಮಾಡುವ ಕುರಿತು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ 
Thank you, Dr. Anuja. This is not the end, but the beginning of new dawn. I now request our beloved Dean and Director, Dr. Kavita Patil, ma'am, to deliver the presidential address. present here on this joyous and historic occasion today at Gulburga Institute of Medical Sciences. I feel highly privileged to have this opportunity to address on this memorable event. As you all know that this is an important moment for celebration of the third Convocation Day of Gulburga Institute of Medical Sciences. It's an honor for me to deliver this speech for this function. It's a great moment to cherish a rare privilege and pleasure having the most distinguished and accomplished personality from the medical field of Karnataka, who is none other than the Government of India Padma Shri Awadi, Dr. B. N. Gangadhar, the President for Medical Assessment and Rating Board and August Body for the Medical Education of India, that is the National Medical Commission, New Delhi. And you all must be aware that he was also a director for the prestigious center of the national importance, our own Nimans Institute at Bangalore. He has also served in many prestigious institutes in the most distinguished positions and in the most senior capacities that anyone would dream of. He has an impeccable and a longest list of publications for his credit. Thank you for addressing and uh, uh, accepting our uh, request to address this gathering, sir. Actually, when I humbly requested sir for presiding over this convocation, he was very kind and generous enough to accept and bless you all with his illustrious address and impeccable knowledge. Sir, we will be ever grateful for this notable gesture of yours and profusely thank you once again. And on the occasion of this third convocation of Gulbarg Institute of Medical Sciences, we have another distinguished guest of honor and most upright civil servant and dedicated personality, Mr. Mr. Anirudh Shravan, Shravanji IAS, who is currently the Secretary of Kalyana Karnataka Region Development Board, Gulbarga. And he is also known as the lake man of this region, as he has built and rejuvenated uh, thousands of uh, and hundreds of lakes in this arid district of as CEO of Gulbarga ZP. And his hard work and vision has brought cheers to thousands of farmers across the hundreds of villages of Gulbarga by providing drinking water as well as water for irrigation. And one of the moment uh, of pride, I also welcome the principal the medical superintendent, the heads of department, the senior residents, junior residents, the postgraduate students and the undergraduate students, the staff of Jim's Hospital and College, and the proud and happy parents and relatives of the students who have gathered here for the convocation, and most importantly, the distinguished press and the media fraternity present over here. And this is a moment of joy for the faculty, the staff, and the students and their parents that have, that the hard work, sincerity and commitment has made this moment possible. And I heartily, heartily congratulate all the recipients of degrees and awards and wish you a very best for your future endeavors. And today is a very special day for us who have gathered here. And uh, also this completes one phase of your undergraduate academic journey and your liberties of being students are over and now it is time for you to tighten up your belts again as you would be venturing into this noble profession of medicine. And from now onwards, you will be dealing with the most pre precious creation of God and will have to be your best both professionally and as human beings. And this is a huge responsibility that you will be owning from now onwards. One of the ways uh, Sorry, I would like to congratulate all the graduating students and their families for their hard work 
and an intensive study during the past few years and all of you can be proud of your wonderful achievement. And I hope your experiences at gyms have been very rewarding to all of you despite many stressful restrictions due to the pandemic and the academic rigors and those rewards to you owe a great deal and I hope that the environment of gyms provides as well as the tremendous efforts by our faculty members and the staff to make your study here meaningful and rewarding throughout your lifetime. And the institution has grown over the last few years and maintained the best position in the last in the three facets that is provision of medical care to the patients, the medical education to the students and research activities. The ever increasing number of patients at Gulbarga Institute of Medical Sciences shows the unflinching faith that coming from different neighboring districts of uh, Gulbarga as well as uh, the neighboring districts I mean to say and many patients being referred to Gulbarga Institute of Medical Sciences Hospital in the late phase and in a complicated stage when the doctors of Gulbarga Institute have uh, handled them with utmost care and many of the lives have been saved. And the best example I would like to quote here is a COVID-19 pandemic outbreak where in the first case of COVID-19 was detected in Kalburgi and then the series of events followed. Gulbarga Institute uh, Gulbarga Institute Hospital was designated COVID hospital during all the waves and the treatment were carried out as per the protocol and the guidelines of the ICMR and the second wave which was worst which were when there was acute shortage of oxygen in most of the hospitals and almost all the cases were referred to Gulbarga Institute of Medical Science Hospital where we were not even in a position to deny any admissions. And COVID vaccine, then uh, the COVID vaccination started and overall this COVID pandemic itself was a good lesson and learning for every human being and most unforgettable area. And next uh, I would like to talk a few words about the Gulbarga Institute of Medical Sciences Hospital upgradation wherein there is an established trauma care center of 110 beds with 20 beds reserved for neurotrauma and trauma care is equipped with 128 live CT scan machine which is functional and 1.5 Tesla, Tesla MRI machine which will be put up uh, to, for use by 12th of May and apart from trauma care the upcoming super speciality hospital is in a stage of completion. The strong infrastructure which requires the availability of a huge manpower including doctors, specialists, super specialists nursing and paramedical staff and in this backdrop the National Medical Commission has taken several path breaking initiatives to pave way to increase the number of doctors and specialists and I wish to say a few of our words uh, about of my humble experience to all these instances who are present on this occasion. You all need to have a burning passion in yourself to be the most adored, the most respectable because you are in one of the most respectable profession in your life wherever you start your career. And one thing I would like to say is do not compare yourself to anyone. The sun and the moon shine at different times but both are indispensable. Make yourself one of them. You are one responsible to create and design your own life. Self-confidence is a very powerful and magical tool you have to chase till your goal gets tired and caught by you. And as Dr. Abdul Kalamji, the ex-president, former state president of India said, look at the sky, the whole universe is friendly to us and wants to give us the best to those who dream and work. He also quoted, do not rest after your first victory because if you fail in the second, more lips are waiting to say that your first victory was just by luck. And we need always to keep these quotes in mind while attempting for the best and even after achieving the first. Listen to the great success stories but start uh, writing for one for yourself and by doing that what can be the best for you. And today you are getting nearer to your ambitions and there is one such milestone but still there are many miles to go. 
and you will survive only if you have that burning desire inside you. And life will only change when you are committed to your dreams and work for it and never get in cozier to the comfort zone. Remember, the harder it gets, the more rewarding it will be. What seems the smallest things you are doing learning today may save you in a very big situation tomorrow. And one of the most important tasks for all of you is work-life balance. It is more than just a phrase. Nothing is more important than one's mental and emotional well-being. Your intelligence quotient alone may not be adequate. Your emotional quotient and social quotient do play a crucial role all through your personal and professional life. Remember to imbibe these qualities without which you may not completely or fully enjoy your professional life, personal life or social life. You have to go through this, through this life with more than just a passion for change. You need a strategy. I'll repeat that. I want you to have a passion but also have a strategy, not just awareness, but action. Learn from every mistake because every experience encounter there is a, uh, there is to teach you and force you into being more who you are and figure out what is next right home. The key to life is to develop an internal moral and an emotional positioning system. And as you graduate, you deal with your excitement and doubts and I urge you to try and create a world that you want to live in. And the excellence is not just a skill, it is an attitude. And a little progress each day adds up to big results. Self-discipline is a magic power that makes you virtually unstoppable. And discipline is just choosing between what you want and now and what you want the most. And the successful warrior is the average man with the laser-like focus. So go forward, but not with the glow, but all that you have achieved, but with the stark reality of what lies ahead. There are challenging times for doctors as we increasingly en encounter various new diseases, the pandemics, the unknown terrains. There will be efforts to devaluate, devalue what, all whatever you have learned and experienced. Work to make the system still better. Stay strong, work hard, and appreciate all you have got. Be confident. Remember, confidence comes from pure knowledge. And uh, seek blessing from all of you, um, from your parents and the faculty who have taught you selflessly and God. And I wish you all the good luck and God bless you, uh, every one of you. And I profusely thank the Honorable President of MARB, Dr. Gangadhar, Sri Anirudh Shravji, Principal Dr. Umesh Sir, respected HODs faculty members and staff of Jim's College and Hospital, the media fraternity, the parents and the guests on this occasion for giving me an opportunity to address this memorable occasion. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you ma'am for being the backbone of this institute, encouraging each one of us to achieve greater heights and excellence. Uh, the story of ma'am's uh, uh, talk, what I would like to conclude with is, Money comes and goes, but morality comes and grows. Thank you. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude, and gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. I request Dr. Revan Siddhapa, sir, Professor, Department of Pediatrics, to render the word of thanks.
I thank you to give me an opportunity to come on the stage on this auspicious day of this event and all the interns and all the students sitting over here for this graduation day. First of all, I thank our uh, chief guest, Dr. Bian Gangadhar sir, for this auspicious event. He has made his time for this college and this place. He is far away from Delhi. Uh, next, I thank uh, Dr. Uh, Anirudh Shraun sir, IAS. He is a very busy man. As it has been expressed that, you know, he is the best civil servant working around and seen in the Kalyan Karnataka area. Then I thank uh, Dr. Kavita Patil, Director Jims. And uh, uh, we have seen a lot of development during her last uh, three years of her tenure. And I thank uh, Dr. Umesh SR, sir, Principal, Jims Kalurgi. And uh, I thank uh, Shafiuddin, sir, Medical Superintendent of our college. Thank one and all. So, congratulations again for all the uh, comedies. Everyone to assemble in the garden for the dinner. 